A suspected serial killer finally caught by the long arm of the law. DNA evidence linked Robert Hayes, the suspect in a Palm Beach homicide, to at least three more killings in Daytona Beach from more than a decade ago. His name did pop up earlier in the investigation, uh, but, uh, you know, we didn't have enough ever, ever, uh, evidence at that time to even, at that point, didn't even think he was even linked to it. The news giving the community relief and the victim's loved ones some closure. Thank God they finally caught this piece of garbage. A lot of emotions riding high on this one. We're honored to be joined by two of the people who were instrumental in getting this case cracked. Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood, Daytona Beach Police Chief Craig Capri, and thank you both for being with us Good this morning. morning. So let's start first with, take me back uh, to when this was going on. You were actually Police Chief of Daytona Beach at the time that this was going on, and this was a real sort of a, a craw on your side at the time. Yeah, I got hired in 2006, shortly after the last victim, Ivana Patton, was found. And there were tons of resources poured into this. FDLE was involved, the FBI was involved, uh, uh, Daytona Beach Police Department. And over the years, we conducted many, many, many operations to try to catch him. We knew he had his DNA, so we knew sooner or later he was going to stub his toe and we were going to get him. We arrested, I don't know how many, and, and Chief Capri worked for, for me. I don't, can't tell you how many prostitution operations we ran where we swabbed every John that we arrested. 700 people. Easy. Wow. People. And going back, I was reading some of the details of this case going back then, and you guys were giving, given a profile of who they thought it was yes. that turned out to be completely inaccurate. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just like these profiles. It's, just a, it's an educated guess. It's a theory. It's a, a tool to use. At the end of the day, you know, like the sheriff said, DNA was going to solve the case, and we knew that, and that's what ultimately what happened. One of the other fascinating points of the case is that you guys actually did sit down and interview this guy because he had purchased a gun, and the gun matched the gun that was used in the crimes. Is that right? Yes, they interviewed him twice back, I believe, in 05. The gun was a very specific gun. It was a Smith & Wesson 40 caliber, and the detectives had done a phenomenal job. They went back and tried to interview every single person who bought that gun prior to the homicide. I would like to tell you it was going to work, but Tallahassee shut us down because they said we couldn't compile a list to match the gun purchaser to the list of tips that we were getting coming in. Wow. So when this was all going on, did you guys have a hunch about this? And what, kind of what's going through your mind when you're investigating well, a case like this? I can tell you, just don't let up. Yeah. Uh, cold cases, we don't ever let up. We keep investigating. And I could tell you the hundreds and hundreds of man hours that went into this. Uh, volunteers that came in, retired, detectives came back working the case, uh, civilians, everybody was trying to get this. It never, we never stopped. We never let up, knowing that one day we'd get closure. The most important thing for the victims' families mm -hmm. and for the victims. And I think we succeeded in that. And uh, a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Just don't let up. Keep relentless. Keep following up on every lead, and just be aggressive. Don't ever. And that's with every cold case. And it's great when you can clear a cold case, let alone a serial killer case. Right. It's huge, stuff. huge. One of the other things I think people will be fascinated by with this case is that this guy was actually a criminal justice student. We're not talking about just some you know guy living on a street corner here. We're talking about somebody who had a college education. Well, if you look how he changed his M.O., you know his first three victims were done in close prox in close t proximity time wise. Uh, used a firearm. And left DNA. Now we force, for, fast forward 14 years. The victim clearly he used some type of protection when he had sex, but the DNA they got off of her was from the off of the victim was because of the struggle. That's how much the science has emerged from wow. 2006 through 2019. Well, the details of how they ended up matching everything up between the Palm Beach case yes. and here is really fascinating. But yeah. but a lot of people are going to now say, okay, when are the charges going to come down for the cases locally? You know, I talked to the state attorney yesterday, and he said it's not going to be that that long. He's they're really working. I just want to tie up a few loose ends. We have enough probable cause right now, but why rush? He's in custody in Palm Beach County. There's no need for us to rush. We want to make sure we make a solid case and we get closure for these families and, and put this, this killer away forever. The way they go about these cases, the DNA, all that's so fascinating. And, yeah. and what I read was that they actually went through the, the guy's garbage. Is that right? Yeah, they followed him. Yeah. And uh, they got him with drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. They got that. They sent it off to the lab. That matched all four murders. Yep. And then they bring him in and question him, and they get a search warrant and do a, a comparison swab where you get a, a cheek swab, and then it goes back, and now you got 100% confirmation that wow. this is your guy. Are you encouraged that DNA is going to be cracking a whole lot more cases in the future? I believe so, absolutely. And as technology, not just DNA, all law enforcement technology that's coming, all these new things, what's law enforcement going to be like in the next 10, 15, 20 years as far as solving crimes? It's endless. Wow. There are things that 
we learn from the serial killer investigation that are put in play today in every time, every world investigation, license plate readers. You know, we ring the area where he was praying with license plate readers. Now every city in Volusia County is ringed in tag readers. Uh, FDLE developed a tip spreadsheet yep. that is still used on every major investigation today to, that, that came out of the serial killer investigation. Wow. Well, you guys are doing great work, and we're so glad that this case hopefully is solved and that the charges are coming, and thank you so thank much. You, Amy. Always thank you, Sheriff. Always a pleasure. Chief Capri, thank, thank you. you both for being thank with you. us this morning.